So after Bernie's victory in Nevada, I mean, he may be unstoppable. I think that you can currently plausibly make the case that he's already the presumptive nominee. I mean, he's clearly the front runner. That's undeniable. But you can argue that he's already the presumptive nominee. And by Super Tuesday, he probably is going to have this wrapped up. But if he wins South Carolina... I think that the odds of him getting an outright majority increase exponentially because with more and more momentum, it's like this snowball effect that just continues to build and build and build. And if he can win South Carolina, he could possibly also knock out other contenders. Now, let me tell you how important South Carolina is for Joe Biden. This is a must-win state for Joe Biden. He has basically staked everything on winning South Carolina. He's claimed this is his firewall. This is this is everything. If Joe Biden loses South Carolina, he no longer has an argument to make to his donors, who are already very nervous about his chances, and they don't necessarily want to invest any more money into a losing campaign. So Joe Biden has got to win to prove to his donors that his campaign has momentum to survive Super Tuesday. And if he doesn't win South Carolina, there's a really good chance that he drops out before Super Tuesday because it would be that embarrassing for him. Now, currently, when you look at Real Clear Politics polling averages, he still has a lead, but there's a new poll from NBC News and Maris which shows Bernie Sanders is within striking distance. Joe Biden is currently at 25% in South Carolina, so he's leading. But in second place is Bernie Sanders with 24%. That is absolutely incredible. And now you have Tom Steyer with 15% in third place. Pete Buttigieg in fourth place at 9%. Warren in fifth place, 8%. Klobuchar, 6th place with 5%, and Gabbard in 7th place with 3% of the vote. Guys, let me just reiterate here. Bernie is within one point of Joe Biden. And um, on top of that, this poll was conducted between February 18th and 21st, which means this poll was taken before he got the Nevada momentum, before he won Nevada in a landslide. And he'll most likely get even more momentum after Nevada. In other words, what I'm trying to say is, holy shit, Bernie can win South Carolina. Now, you can already argue that even if it's this close and he doesn't win, Joe Biden still can't prove to his donors that, you know, they should keep funding him because they're not going to pour money into uh, something that is just not going to go anywhere. So even if Bernie manages to tie with Joe Biden or come in a close second, you can still argue that, you know, it's over for Joe Biden. But if Bernie Sanders beats Joe Biden in South Carolina, it's over for Joe Biden. He can't possibly make a case to his donors or voters. Now, I want to look at Real Clear Politics polling averages because it does show that overall Biden leads with about a 5.1 point advantage. And according to 538, they are projecting a Biden victory by about four points. But what I want you to do is acknowledge that we can still win this. We can still win this. So if you are in South Carolina, you've got to go guns blazing, you know, uh, pedal to the metal, knock on twice the amount of doors, make, you know, phone calls if you don't live in South Carolina or not willing to go down there. If we win this, I mean... Bernie Sanders is just unstoppable. Imagine, we saw how loudly the media screamed and was hysterical, at least MSNBC, when he won Nevada by a landslide, even though they were predicting a Bernie victory in Nevada. But if there's an upset in South Carolina, there's no recovering from that for the other candidates. They might not make it to Super Tuesday, even though Super Tuesday is just a couple of days after South Carolina. South Carolina votes on Saturday, and then Super Tuesday is on Tuesday. So there's a lot riding on this. This is not a state that is must win for Bernie Sanders by any stretch of the imagination, but we want to win this because we want momentum. We want a majority of delegates. So that way, going into the convention in July, when we're in Milwaukee, 
we don't have to worry about them stealing, stealing it from Bernie Sanders. If he can win an outright majority on that first round, we lock it up. That's it. That's it. Now, 538 projects that he has a 46% chance of actually securing a majority. So with Nevada and all that momentum, we increased our odds of actually getting a majority. But if we can win South Carolina, then on Super Tuesday, I mean, it could be a clean sweep. I don't know. And on Super Tuesday, another thing to look at is Bernie may beat Elizabeth Warren in her home state of Massachusetts. If that happens, that would be a political embarrassment that will last for years to come. I mean, it's going to haunt Elizabeth Warren throughout her career. So Bernie Sanders, I mean, if he could win South Carolina, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Just, it will be great. Now, as I tell you this, I, I want to really stress, we can never ever become too confident. We can't underestimate our opponents because they've already admitted they're willing to get dirty. They're willing to try to steal the nomination away from Bernie Sanders. There are some DNC members that want to change the rules so that way, even if Bernie gets a majority, they can steal it from him in that first round. I mean, these are all things that become less likely as time goes on and as he becomes more unstoppable. But still, we have to do everything in our power to win as big as we possibly can and overperform because we're going up against very strong, powerful, well-funded forces. We are fighting an oligarch. We're fighting other candidates who have super PACs, who are bankrolling their campaigns with dark money, including Elizabeth Warren. So we can't afford to underestimate our opponents. We have to pretend as if we're down in the polls. We have to pretend as if, you know, we always are the underdogs, regardless if we're polling ahead in states. And don't ever get too confident or cocky. We have to pretend as if, you know, we're losing. With that being said, though, I do feel good, and let's just win South Carolina, because if we do that, I mean, we're looking at a political earthquake, an upset that will be in the history books for sure.